and we're back nocturnal duck here with a brand new deck just for you and your sweet sweet head and this is turbo mystic look out for this one Okay, so here we are with this Starfield Mystic Brew, the Turbo Mystic, if you will. And I dubbed it that because it moves incredibly fast, probably the fastest white-black deck I've ever played. Um, the way it all works is built entirely around Starfield. He is going to be the star of the show, but there is some new pieces from Theros that have really sort of brought it home. So what are we trying to do? We have things like Pious Wayfair, Obviously Starfield Mystic, Favour of Eris, and these three together will just start chaining, chaining little combos together. But then I also have Hateful Eliodon and the Aphemia. Now these two are the new pieces that really change the game, and I'll get into how and why. So I think the easiest way to explain this deck is to just give you a scenario. If we have a Pious, a Starfield, and a Favoured out on the battlefield and we throw a dead weight on a creature and kill it it is going to trigger him putting a 1-1 counter on him trigger him giving you the ability to buff the favored of eros and also triggered this guy so he has double strike so he'll be a double strike 3-3 three, three, and he'll be a 3-3 three, three. and hopefully they won't have many creatures to defend and if they do they're going to lose them and that's sort of just how all most of my games have gone down the other scenario would be if we were to have a Hateful or an Aphemia. When they come into play, they're going to trigger these two. And when they die, they're going to trigger Starfield Mystic, as they're both enchantment creatures. And just a side note, the Aphemia is big glue part of the deck. The way that she works is pretty crazy. At the beginning of your end step, you can exile an enchantment from your graveyard, and if you do, create a 2-2 black zombie token. It doesn't sound that flash, I know, but when it's in a deck like this, it is stupid. So you have a Mystic out and an Aphemia out, you throw a dead weight on something killing it, you buff him, and at the end of your turn, you turn that dead weight into a 2-2 zombie. Now, a side note is she's a legendary enchantment creature, so if you have two in hand and, an enchant and a star field on the battlefield, you can play both of these back to back, triggering him, leaving one on the battlefield and then one in the graveyard ready to turn into a zombie. So that can really start going crazy. Um, the Hateful really draws us cards. That's the main reason that he's in here. So if a creature dies that has an aura attached to it that we control, we draw a card, whether it's ours or theirs. So we have a dead weight that's going to do obvious things. Myers Grasp is going to trigger this guy and draw us cards. Now, the inevitable end is a very interesting one because you can throw that on one of their creatures, forcing them to sacrificing it, giving us a card draw, putting an enchantment in our graveyard for Ephemia and triggering a Starfield Mystic. So it can really kind of, you know, trigger two or three things back to back. But you can also throw this on one of your own creatures. And why would you want to do that? Well, for the card draw. If you throw this on one of these guys and then sacrifice the next turn, you get a card. So that can be a pseudo card draw in an emergency situation. But for the most part, you are putting that on something like that they want to keep. And they're forced to kill everything else off, which is really freaking cool. Um, so, uh, all the glitters, we know what that does. I only have two copies because you need targets, and I feel like four, you're going to hold them until you have a target. Two seems to be the right amount, and you throw that straight onto a favoured of Iris, and he will have double strike, and be buffed to whatever he amount of enchantments that you have out. So, he, that can be a crazy, crazy combo. And back to the inevitable end, if you have that on a creature, or two, a couple of these out, and the Doom Foretold, or two, they are in Pain City. They're sacrificing two things, we're getting super value, you know, so the idea is you are just painting them into a corner by turn three, 
and by turn four you have such an upper hand that whatever they do you can recover and you're still got your full life total like you're losing life more to your pain lands than you are from the opponent and that's very kind of noticeable um, the other thing to mention is that we only really have these four four drops four doom for tolds so everything else is three and under so i'm only running 22 lands because we kind of just need the three lands and then that's it we can loop and loop and loop obviously more lands is better but you know we don't we would prefer to see our pieces of the puzzle than you know turn six land that's sort of just where it would run you will mulligan to get the right hand but most of the time you're pretty good everything being three is so comfortable it's a very comfortable pilot um but yeah that's pretty much how it works you know all of these trigger in each other all of the creatures really synergize perfect with each other all of the um enchantments are really causing their opponent to be hating their life and really just benefiting us at the same time you know Earth of Kai is going to get us back in the game with some life if we really need it. But also, if you have one of these on their big creature, and then you throw this down and you've done six damage to it, you know, so you can really clear some big creatures if you want. Banishing Light is another one. This is a good removal piece. This can take away their Calamity or their Planeswalker, whatever. And this deck does hold its own. It's kept up and beaten Calamity decks pretty easily. Nissa decks, it's outpaced it. It's taken lands, it's taken Nissa and swung in with chunky, chunky things. The, um, I thought the green deck was going to be the chunky deck, you know? Yeah, it's, it's a joke, I know. But the process for this is really surprising. It catches them off guard, and you will be surprised as well. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow. Hit me up in the comments if you build this deck, and let me know if there's any enchantments that would go in here perfect, or creatures or whatever, because, you know, I haven't collected all the cards, obviously, so... I really am keen to learn what else should go in here, but for now, it's working. It's actually working really good. So enough chin flapping from me. Let's go and check some games out. Okay, so this doesn't look like it's the best, but we will keep it. Um... You're gonna get a black. So he's got a red deck. And this might not. I haven't versed a red deck with this. A proper red deck. Oh, it's a red blue. That's different. Um, so I think we just get him out and gain a life. So now he's... Okay, I thought he was going to be in Counterspell area. Apparently not. Get this guy down and get an attack in, shall we? Okay, still no targets for our enchantments. There we go. Um, hmm. So we'll swing with just our one dude. He's going to double it. No, it's not. Okay, well he's done his damage. Should have done that in my turn. It looks like he's only going to have these... Okay, there we go, that's good. Hate using these on tokens. Sure, buddy. Oh, 
Okay. Um. So we get that going. Get another draw. And then we're going to get a, another white. Um, I guess we just put another one down. Okay. So he's either going to have an answer. So now he wants to draw some cards. Alright, well he's not going to like what we do to that thing. Hmm. Interesting. Good card draw. Awesome. It does stop the Okay, so I'm going to attack first. Damn. Perfect. Cool. Yes. We're going to get a white. And yes, yeah, so we will get rid of one of them. Nice. So he's facing down quite a lot here. Okay, so he's got a good... Stump in his hand. It's tapping out too, which is interesting. Depending on what we draw here. No blocks. Hmm. It's not the best. I'll just take that. And then we'll bring this fella out. And then we'll hold him back. Yep, that's fine. Down to four, we get a little pluggage plus a little little dude. What a nice little rollout this does. Yeah, you have to hold them all up the block. Okay. Doesn't. Wow. Hmm. 
Hmm. I'll make him a 1-1 one, one still. Which one? Now this is what we want. This is what we're talking about. Three mana. Cast everything, starting with Mystic. Okay, so now if they put a creature down, we're cheering. That's not good. Okay, so we'll get this guy down. Alright, so you got another one of them or what? Radio. We'll get another one down. Now, if you have a removal for that, you're just playing a jerk deck. Good. Bunch of you crap. Okay, cool. I don't want to dump my hand just yet. So we got two damage in and we'll make a zombie. Beautiful. Sure. That's kind of not what we want. Hmm. You're going to sacrifice your food? Yep, so we'll gain three life and get seven damage in. He's got something in hand. No, he's just doing his food. Just having a meal. Right, we'll hold that. Now he's got enough for a counter spell. Um, we'll get it out anyway. Down to seven. was not so nice for us. Okay. Sure. Get another buff. Doesn't have a trample though. Yeah, you gotta go for the flyer. 
Now, are you gonna swing in? That's the question. Okay, so hopefully he doesn't have a counter spell here. Good. So we get a little buffage. And we go all in. Okay, so it's obviously gonna block the big guy. Take six down to two. So he has to have a blocker. No, nothing. We were just hanging in that. Gee whiz. So this is a good start. Good old Turbo Mystic. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. Well, you missed out on that one, didn't you? And you helped me do this. Boom. I love this thing. Perfect for this deck. Beautiful. So now we'll get some damage in. And another zombie. So, nearly threatening lethal. <laughs> if we had a buff. Mm. Okay. So I'm going to empty my hand here. But it is so worth it. Um, doesn't really matter. And we'll get in a solid amount of damage. I mean, it doesn't help that he's been missing lands, but... By turn four, look how much damage and how full our board is. <laughs> and scoop. Yep. Now this looks pretty good. We don't have a untapped black, unfortunately, but tis what it tis. There's our third land, thank God. Okay, so I think we go in with a mystic. Okay, so does he have an answer? He does. Okay. No worries then, mate. Get one of these down. Let's punish him for taking away our creature. And then into this. So we're going to get a black and in turn, see what he puts down. We've got a couple of good answers here. He surely has to put something down. Maybe he's just going to answer it. 
Not a deck full of removal, is it? It's having a good thing. I'm trying to figure out my plan. Okay. So not doing anything. He's holding up in case. So we'll get another one down. I'm gonna put it onto him. He's just taking everything, he's only played removal. Six mana. One removal at that. Trust that Siren's thirst. Just trying to figure out which one to kill. So next turn I am going to put this on to one of them. That way I can get some card draw or for something out of his hand because I'm not getting anything here. And what's he doing? Nothing. Yeah, I am going to do this. Okay, so we'll keep the... And we'll put it onto him. Now he has to have removal. So he went for him. So kind of what we wanted. Down to nine. Okay, cool. So we'll get some card draw here. Bunch of lands. I've got to take a land out. I run twenty three lands, but we only really have three drops. So you're not going to like this. And then, and turn. It's amazing. This deck is just amazing. Yeah. 